Hello and welcome to the very first CNC against me. My name is Hamilton Dilbeck. Me and two other makers are gonna be going head to head creating projects and you are gonna be voting to figure out who is the winner. Later on, I'm also gonna tell you how one of you could actually win a prize and be in the next CNC against me as well. But first, let's go over the rules. CNC against me is a competition between makers. We've got a prompt, we've got our time, and we've got our material. The prompt was in the title of this video, it belongs on a coffee table. Now, of course, the end result is a coffee table type of project for y'all to be able to create, maybe even sell in a marketplace. As long as it technically could be on a coffee table, it could win. Now, next up is time, and this is going to be less than 10 minutes. When talking about time, we're specifically mentioning machining time. That means when the bit starts carving on your CNC machine to when it actually ends, it needs to be less than 10 minutes. This can be calculated across all of the different types of bits that you're going to be using on the project. Everything said and done, just machining time, needs to be under 10 minutes. And lastly, for material, we're going to make this easy and we're just going to say that it needs to be three quarter inches thick. We certainly could go down the rabbit hole of the X and the Y dimensions, but I really wanna just focus on the Z because a lot of people standard have three quarter inch material in their shop, at least in the United States, and it's close enough where a whole lot of people across the world can be able to benefit from these dimensions in particular. Now, instead of doing an old fashioned brainstorm, I normally jump over to ChatGPT, but Meta just came out with a new model, so I was excited to use that and I sent it just a very simple prompt. Can you give me 20 examples of things that belong on coffee tables? Now it started generating a very long list of books and remotes, coasters, candles, photos, lamps, plants, pens, pencils, and even a TV guide. I honestly and sincerely am asking right now, does anybody out there still have a TV guide? I probably haven't seen a TV guide in well over 15 years, but hey, maybe some people out there have TV guides and they keep them religiously on their coffee tables. Now, all jokes aside, I really care about what people are actually gonna have on their coffee tables because in my mind, I'm creating a project that I could potentially sell at a market. So I wanna create something that is going to be as widespread and available as possible, especially with the parameters that we have being able to carve it in under 10 minutes. There is a strong possibility that either one of my projects or one of the other makers projects are going to be something that somebody really could sell. Out of that list, I really like candles and I liked pen and pencils. So today we're gonna to be focused on creating a tray that holds a candle as well as pen and pencils. Creating a tray for candles is kind of a no-go when you're dealing with wood. On the bottom of every single candle, you're going to see a little label and it's a warning. It tells you how long you should actually be burning the candle and then letting it die down so that it re-solidifies before burning it again. All the things that they have to put on the bottom for all the legal stuff to make sure you don't burn your house down. Well, when mixing wood and candles, there's a high probability that things are going to burn. So of course, the thing that you want to look at is candle jars. Now, of course, I went down a rabbit hole and started looking at what is the most common versions of a glass container candle. This is the size candle that is going to be most readily available and sold at Target, Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond. I did have another candle from around the house, so I took measurements off of these two just to make sure that both of these candles could fit. This is the same diameter as the Walmart version of the Yankee Candle, as well as Yankee Candles themselves. So this is going to fit a lot of different candles, and it's also going to be safe so that it's not going to melt and start burning the wood and burn a house down. Every candle maker's nightmare. <laughs> now that we got the dimension for our candle, I really wanted to make sure that I was getting the correct dimension for pens and pencils. Specifically for me, I love these little Sharpie pens. I really wanted to make sure that this tray in particular was able to hold those Sharpie pens, so I didn't want to make it too big. I didn't want to make it too small. Thankfully, my mat here has a ruler, so 17 to 23. This is a little bit under six inches, so we wanna make sure that our trough can be able to handle a six inch long pen. And yes, I did say trough, because we are gonna be creating a tray for this, but I do wanna have a specific area that really makes sure that you know that's where a pen or a pencil belongs. I do personally like large areas that are just catch-all for anything that you throw in there, but I think it makes it a little bit extra special when you know where a specific object goes. So now that I knew the dimensions for my candle as well as the dimensions for my pen, it was really easy to go into Carco, start designing, and this is what I came up with. You can see right here, it's made out of three quarter inch material. We have a few different pockets. We've got our main pocket that is gonna hold our candle, middle pocket for our pen, and then two side pockets that are at a slight strange depth that are going to be able to hold any other random things that you might want to throw in there. I also mocked up another four designs that are gonna be included as SVGs with these files for anybody who wants to cut them out because I did cut out all five versions. But the main one that I'm gonna be submitting for this CNC against me is going to be the candle pen tray. So we've established the purpose of the project, we have designed the project, let's go ahead and go out to the CNC machine and cut it out. 
So I headed out to the Onefinity Elite Foreman and I put down this piece of BAM core. This is a really cool bamboo sheet material that I have been using lately and absolutely loving it. I have it linked down in the description if you're interested in getting some yourself. It's actually fairly affordable if you are selling your projects. Now on the back of it, I absolutely covered the entire thing with double-sided tape. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to really get all these projects slammed in very close, not waste a whole lot of material, but also make sure that I am not having the project shift around and messing up on me. Now we're only gonna be using two bits on this project. We're gonna be using our bowl cut bit and our downtown Jenny. So first and foremost, I'm gonna be loading up my bowl cut bit and I'm gonna be cutting out all of the pockets with this. Some of y'all might've noticed that I have a brand new dust shoe on the CNC machine. And in this, you can see that it is not working properly as it is supposed to. And that's because I've got a brand new video coming out next week that's gonna be showing off a few different dust boots because I do get questions all of the time about the different dust boots out there and what the things that I recommend. And there's a lot of options. We'll be going over all of that next week. So next up, I went ahead and loaded in the Downtown Jenny, which is our quarter inch down shear bit. And that is going to just do our profiles. We're gonna be cutting our parts loose. I'm not gonna be using any type of tabs or bridges with this because I do have all that double-sided tape on the bottom. And as you can see right here, nothing moved around. The double-sided tape really did its job. Once all the profiling was done, I came back with my hand router and I used one of those little mini roundover bits. I rounded over all the edges that I could on the top and the bottom. And then I threw these things into a bucket of mineral oil. That is my finish of choice specifically for these. I think it's really, really great. It's also food safe and make sure that your project can be sold the next day because you just let it soak, let it dry, and then you're good to go. And after all of that was done, we ended up with this these five different trays, but remember this is the only one that I'm gonna be submitting for CNC against me. Sometimes I get a little bit too laser focused and end up creating a few different things, but hey, these SVGs will be available for anybody who's gonna be downloading this file pack this week. Now BAM core is a really interesting material where it is entirely bamboo, but the top and the bottom are going to be a much darker material, whereas the inside is going to be your more natural bamboo. Everything is running in cross directions, which gives that a lot of rigidity and strength, and it makes for a really, really great material when creating stuff like this. I was very pleased to be able to create our pin tray and carve down into the material without exposing the next layer and still have a very usable tray for our pin, while at the same time being able to have our candle and have it fit down into the hole. As you can see right here, I'm shaking it around. It's not really moving too much. We did create the pocket nice and deep so that it does have a nice snug place to sit. Now, earlier in this video, I mentioned that you could be one of the winners. Right now, over on cncwithme.com, there is a brand new challenge available where you have exactly these same prompts. Belongs on a coffee table, machine time in under 10 minutes, and three quarter inch material. Now, any of these CNC with me bits are going to be available, so you can use any of those three in order to create your project. The winner is then going to be given the next set of prompts, and their project is going to be shown off on the YouTube channel on the very next CNC Against Me Challenge, which is going to be the very first Friday of October. Now, if that winner wants to be able to create their own YouTube video and put it up, you're more than welcome to. That's awesome. If you don't have a YouTube channel, don't worry. I'm not expecting that at all. I would still love to be able to show off your creation on the channel, and we're going to let all the viewers decide who is the winner of CNC Against Me. Now, if you're wondering right now, Hamilton, you created your project. There's two other people that have created their projects out there. How are we going to vote? Don't worry, you do not have to be a member of CNC with me in order to vote. This is a very public thing and is specifically for YouTube. So there's really only two things that you need to do to vote. Go ahead and check out Hinkle Shop. Go ahead and check out Duffy Woodcraft. Watch their videos on CNC Against Me. Look at their projects and see who you really like the most. On the bottom of every single one of our videos, in the description, as well as in the comments, we're going to have a straw poll link. It's not going to ask you for any personal information, but you'll be able to vote on who you think should win this competition, and you'll be able to see instantly all of the results as they're coming in. The winner will be announced on the very next video coming out in October for CNC Against Me. Massive thank you to Vernon and Lisa from Hinkle Shop, as well as Alex from Duffy Woodcraft for being able to jump in and do CNC Against Me, the very first inaugural one. They got some random emails and we all figured it out together. And I know how much time and effort goes into creating YouTube videos, so thank you all so much for being able to do that. I hope that the community really enjoys being able to check out a few other creators that you might not have heard of. And I hope that in the future it turns into something bigger where you can find even more of those people out in the community making really cool stuff. Definitely check out Hinkle Shop as well as Duffy Woodcraft. Subscribe to them and make sure to vote on which project is your favorite. May the best project win. Now, for all of you CNC with me members, all of these projects are going to be available in Carveco and Vectric and DXF and SVG formats so that y'all can make all of the projects that y'all are seeing being made 
on C and C against me across all of the different channels. And a huge shout out to Mitz for making all those files available for all of the C and C with me members, creating nice little tidy file packs that are very easy for anybody to use. So if you're a C and C with me member, go ahead and jump on over to cncwithme.com, check out your dashboard where you can find all of the projects, download them and make them to your heart's content. And also make sure that you check out the brand new challenge where you could be on the next CNC against me. Make sure to vote. I will see you all next Friday. Bye.